this screen cam recording, we're going to look at how we can do uh, feedback bias uh, for a common emitter amplifier. Okay, let's have a little look at the specification again. Supply voltage is 10 volts, so let's put a little label up here, 10 volts. Uh, collector current down here is 1 milliamp. Okay, the value of beta for this transistor is 160. And our emitter voltage, VE, is equal to a third supply, which is 3.3 recurring volts. Okay. Account for the current in RC1 as being IC1 plus IB. Okay, so here at the top, the current flowing in is effectively IC plus IB. Quite often you can ignore the value of IB flowing through there, and then it makes a, it makes a nice simple equation for RC2. This one we've added a little bit more complexity in because we've got to account for beta. So let's start by doing some design. I'm going to do a little sketch at the side here, and I'm going to look at where all the voltages are. Okay, our supply line, VCC, is at 10 volts. Let's put 10 volts in there. And down the bottom here we now have VE, we have an emitter voltage, 3.3 volts. Okay, uh, that's good. We want maximum symmetrical swing, we're designing for something like that, but we're ignoring VCE saturation, so we don't have to worry about that. So this collector, this voltage here, VC, the absolute voltage here, wants to be somewhere in the middle there, so that we actually get um, a, a good swing, so our sine waves can go up and then down. Again, they can't go any lower than VEE, so this voltage down the bottom here is effectively sort of like wasted uh, voltage, uh, supply voltage that we can't use in our signals. Again, we can calculate that particular midpoint. Uh, this midpoint will be supply voltage, VCC, minus VE divided by 2. That gives you this value. Add in VE gives you the absolute voltage. The absolute voltage in this case is going to be 6.65 uh, again. 6.65. And we're going to call that VC. It's not VCEQ. VCEQ is this value here. Okay, so that's the, uh, the, the, so what, the midpoint voltage in effect. Right, let's put some numbers in. Let's calculate all of our values. Let's start off with RE. Okay. RE, RE2 on the label here is equal to VE divided by approximately IC. Okay, I'm not going to mess about and add in the base current here. Uh, I just want a, a nice, simple, quick value. So that's 3.3 recurring volts divided by, in this case, 1 milliamp. Okay, 3.3K. Very, very simple to do. There's our first design. We found RE2. Okay, now let's go and calculate RC2. RC is equal to, well, what's the supply voltage? Or what's the voltage at one side of the resistor and the other side of the resistor. Well, we've got um, VCC. We want to subtract from VCC. We want uh, this, this midpoint voltage. Uh, I'm going to call that just v, um, uh, VC, the absolute voltage at the collector. And again, we're going to divide by our collector current, 1 milliamp. Or IC. So I should put IC in there, really, shouldn't I? Okay, so let's put some numbers in. 10 minus 6.65, all divided by 1 10 to minus 3. Okay, that equals, in this case, um, 3.35 um, kilo ohms. Okay, now let's just stop a moment. What we've done here is we've only accounted for IC. So that's the normal sort of trick where students would potentially go wrong because what we've said here is account for the base current as well okay so that's the little trick there so let's just go back and do that again what we really want is VCC minus VC the absolute voltage all divided by right now what's the scaling entity we've got IC down here let's do a little bit of a, a little bit of maths we've got um, IC plus IB. Well, IB could be written as IC over beta. Okay, if we take um, if we take beta out it as a function, what we could write is IC into beta plus 1, all divided by beta. Okay, beta over beta is 1, beta over 1 plus beta is 1 over beta. 
which factors into there. So we're going to substitute down the bottom here, IC, okay, beta plus 1 over beta. There we go. So there's our new equation for RC. And if we do that and put all the numbers in, we're going to end up with something like this. 10 minus 6.65, all divided by uh, 10 to the minus 3, 1 milliamp, multiplied by, uh, well, beta is 160, so that's 161 over 160. Okay, if we do that, we're going to get a, an accurate value of the collector load resistance, which is 3.329 kilo ohms. There we go. So you can see how much those, those values have actually changed. It's not a great deal. Okay, you're looking at um, you know 20 ohms difference to account for that base code. But it is important if the question asks for it. Okay, now let's just calculate RB. Okay, well RB is quite simple. We're starting this time, instead of from the supply, where we did in the constant current bias, we're now starting from the collector load. So we're starting from here. We want the voltage on this node. We want the voltage on this node and then we can calculate the base code. So basically we're starting from VC minus VBB, okay, the absolute voltage at the base, all divided by IC, okay, and we need to account for beta. So IC over beta gives us the base code. So if we put some numbers in now, okay, the voltage at the collector is 6.65 and the value of VBB is 3.3 volts here, add in VBE 0.7, so the voltage at this node here, which I'm labeling as VBB, is 4.03. Okay, all divided by uh, 1 milliamp, 10 to the minus 3, and I'll put on top of the bracket here our value of beta, 160. If we uh, do the maths and calculate the numbers, we end up with 360k. There we go. So we've done our design, and um, we now have our circuit ready to go. So what I'm going to do now, I'll come out of um, PowerPoint. Let's go to uh, AUCAD. Okay, and AUCAD shows me here, we're looking at RC2, RB2, and RE2. Okay, uh, we designed this for 1 milliamp and we are 36 microamps out of specification. Um, we designed the emitter to sit at 3.3 recurring volts, it's at 3.4, so it's very close to our design spec. We wanted one milli... Uh, well, we've got slightly more current in the emitter than we have in the, in the collector, that's fine because that's the base current that's flowing in. We wanted our collector to sit at 6.65 volts, and again it's very very close to our design spec. So. We've actually managed to bias this circuit. I've used design variables again inside here, and we're close to our specification. So you have follow the notes, follow the ideas, and follow the design. Let's just go back here a moment. Uh, one thing I actually want to uh, just quickly discuss. Okay, we're, we're on this slide, this is fine. What would happen if we accounted for VCE saturation inside here? Well, the only thing that would actually change I go to my uh, pen mode again. Let's pop it in a different color. If we accounted for VCE saturation, okay, um, the, the value here, the VE, would have another little bit on top. That would be VCE sat plus VE. Okay, so our voltage here that we've chosen as our quiescent point will be a little bit higher by half VCE sat, so it'll be just a fraction above there, and then our sine waves would swing up and down, so they wouldn't actually go lower than VCE saturation plus VE. So that's the only real change that would actually happen there. Where are the inaccuracies in this design? Well, there are a few. The biggest inaccuracy here is we made an assumption for VBE. We said that VBE is equal to 0.7. Okay, Mathematically, we know that's not quite correct. But as far as the designs go, they're getting us very, very close to where we want to be. If we wanted to be closer, we'd actually use the equation for VBE, VT natural log IC over IS. 
in this case we don't need to bother okay we're just uh, doing the basics for the moment that's the end of this screen cam